in this part we will talk about the other nucleic acid that is RNA or ribonucleic acid. RNAs are of three types. First mRNA that is messenger RNA. Then tRNA which is transfer RNA and third is rRNA ribosomal RNA. And their names are on the basis of the function that they perform or the part of the structure to which they are attached to. For example, mRNA is messenger RNA. And why is this mRNA required? The information for any protein to be synthesized is on DNA. DNA is in the nucleus and the protein synthesizing structure that is ribosome, they are in the cytoplasm. So either DNA has to come out of the nucleus or ribosome should go inside. Both of these things are not possible. So there has to be a molecule which can bring the code from DNA to ribosome in the cytoplasm. And that job is done by mRNA. The second one is tRNA or transfer RNA. When protein synthesis begins, those amino acids which are circulating in the cytoplasm, they must be brought to the site where protein is being synthesized. That job is done by tRNA and rRNA which are the part of ribosome, they are the ones which actually help in protein synthesis. So we will take up all these three in detail starting with mRNA or messenger RNA mRNA is synthesized on DNA. From DNA to mRNA, the process is known as transcription. So DNA undergoes transcription and we get mRNA. This is not one step reaction. We are just writing the name here. This is transcription. Now before we take the detailed structure of mRNA, we need to understand how this a process takes place. DNA which is a double stranded structure this is our DNA. If one strand has a code which we need for protein synthesis to understand this let us say it has ATCG ATCG this is the code which we need and we know the codes are read in triplets. So this is the code which is required. So if we make RNA on this strand, we actually don't get this code. Let me write down the complementary code. We know as per base pair rule, A is going to pair with T, T with A, C with G and G with C. Same here with T, A, G and C. Now if I make mRNA on this strand. I'm looking for code, this code. So if I get mRNA synthesized here, what is going to come in front of A? We know in RNA, T gets replaced by U. So it's going to be U in place in front of T, it's going to pair with A and C is going to pair with G. So it is U, A, G. U is exactly say, similar in terms of um, T. So this UAG is exactly like TAG. I am looking for ATC. Instead, I am getting something like this. So if I need a code of one strand, I need to transcribe the other strand. Let us see this. I erase this and now we make mRNA on this strand. So how would this mRNA be? T is going to pair with A. A is going to pair with U because this is RNA and G with C. So what I get here on mRNA is AUC which is like ATC. So if I transcribe this strand then only I get the correct mRNA. So now let us name these strands. The strands or the strand whose code is required that means we are talking about this strand is our coding strand but coding strand is not transcribed this is the strand which is getting transcribed that means this is acting as a template so we call it 
a template strand. So mRNA synthesis takes place on a template strand. Now say this is our template strand that we are taught of and we are synthesizing mRNA. So what we get here is mRNA which is synthesized but here we are going to call it HNRNA. HNRNA. Heteronuclear RNA. Heteronuclear RNA or HNRNA has two parts. Certain parts are coding parts and certain parts are non-coding parts. So let me just enlarge this HNRNA. This is the HNRNA and here there are parts. These highlighted parts are the coding ones and the blank ones are the non-coding parts. The coding parts are known as exon and exon and the non-coding ones are introns. Exons are coding parts. These are the coding parts and introns are non-coding. So why should we have these non-coding parts? These should be removed. So this HR, HNRNA undergoes splicing. Splicing is basically cutting it with the help of endonuclease. Endonuclease is the enzyme which is going to cut it. When, when we cut it, what we get? These exons, introns, exons, introns are cut. And now using another enzyme that is ligase, only exon, exons are joined. So after this we'll continue here. Say so this is one exon, next exon, next exon, next exon and next one. So only exons have joined. Exons are only coding parts. So only exons have joined. Can we call it mRNA now? We cannot because it is a highly unstable molecule. It has to be stabilized. So here there is stabilization which takes place. In stabilization, there is a cap and a tail which is added. So, if this is our complete exon, exon joint part, on the fifth end, towards the fifth prime, a cap is added and towards the third prime, a tail is added. After capping and tailing, now the structure becomes stable and we start calling it mRNA. The cap is made up of methylated guanine and tail is made up of polyadenine. We will see the structure of mRNA in detail. Now, let us draw the detailed structure of mRNA now. After this capping and tailing the mRNA structure, it looks like there are only exons, exons which have joined to form the middle part and there is a non-coding part. This is of the same diameter, there is no change. We just draw it like this so that we can differentiate it when we are drawing the structure. And this is the cap. So this structure which is at the fifth prime is cap. Again towards the third end there is a non-coding part and attached to the non-coding part is the tail. This is the third prime and here is the tail. The cap, as we wrote, is made up of methylated guanine and tail is polyadenine. Basically, it means there are many A's here. So, that is why it is known as polyadenine tail. This middle part, which is actually the functional part, that has a start 
codon here. So this first code is actually the star codon which is at the 5 prime. And at the third end or 3 prime there is stop codon. And all those genes or codes which are present in the middle part they become the structural genes. So from here to this part these are structural genes. So this is the detailed structure. Let us also mention these things. These are non-coding parts. Non-coding parts. Same is here. This narrow part which we have drawn is also a non-coding part. So what is the sequence if we grow, go from fifth end? There is cap, non-coding, start codon, structural genes, stop codon, non-coding and the tail part. This is the functional mRNA. So when we say transcription, we normally in single line we say mRNA formation from DNA. But actually mRNA is not directly formed. There is one more molecule which is formed. So this thing can be changed a little bit. We can write it as HNRNA and then HNRNA to mRNA. This entire process is transcription. But the first structure which is formed is not directly mRNA. There is something else. And that is why HNRNA is known as primary transcript. And then it undergoes capping and tailing. So here is capping and tailing and that is how we get our functional mRNA and these are the various parts. In the next segment we will take up another RNA that is T or transfer RNA.